This is the Play No Games podcast. We the hardest working podcast in Portland, Oregon, man. Play no games. Play no games. See, I tried to harmonize a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, is, this is Brad's making do. What? 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 Isn't oh that a my thing? God. This is podcast and show slash show. Oh, it just got real in here. Wow. Uh, I've never was had I guess hijacked the, the, the. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Oh, Go damn. Ahead. <laughs> this is your show. Go ahead. My bad. Go ahead, y'all. Damn. <laughs> I'm just the guest. Welcome oh. to the Play All Games podcast slash show. show. And we are back here yet again. And I think, you know, AJ's going to tell you what we what we be doing here, what our pillars are. Oh, I am? Oh, you, you, you tried to take me down last time. <laughs> I've been saying we out here just helping y'all with relationships. We're helping uh, y'all with social issues. But more importantly, helping you build that self-worth. And so we can so we can put you on a higher vibration yeah. because we want you to be the best version of yourself. All of that, all of that, yeah. And where can they find us, man? You can find us on lookhere.fr on your Instagram, on your social medias, on your YouTube. Are we playing no games on YouTube? Oh, oh yeah, I, we, I, 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 yeah. You know, bro, we this, everywhere. Bro, we this out here. Is crazy. Sp- Spotify out here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you guys really on Spotify? Anchor. Yeah, I didn't know that. Apple Podcasts. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? I'm late. Google Podcasts. We everywhere. We everywhere like your underwear. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And uh, I also just want to say and let everyone know this. Um, yo, if I'll just say, if you really want to help us out, what does Dr. Umar Johnson say? Donations, donations, donations. Dollar sign. Oh, 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 oh wait, wait. Dollar sign. Hero Bob. I'll put this back into the podcast. Hell, I'll pay my guys. That's what I'm trying to do. Pay me. <laughs> um, but before we get into anything else, we have uh, a very Im- illustrious special guest. <laughs> me? Oh, F- oh my oh. gosh. Oh, the, the person who's trying to hijack the show? Uh, I already. The gate. I wanted to harmonize and be a part of the group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize. We have, <laughs> me and this person go back as, wow, we go back to like Wonder Balls and um, Pokemon. Yes. Yes. Very, very far. And the Deb, Deb Ball. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's when I was a tuning. And uh, for anyone who knows, you know, I was a young ninja and then uh, I had to grow up a little bit. But before anything else. I've known this guy, love this guy. Besides me knowing him, he's done so many great things in the community, whether that's for work or that's connecting people. And when it comes to just guests that we have on, he's definitely a person that um, I want y'all to hear from. He has a very balanced perspective from digital marketing, content, media, and this all around, all around just getting people together. We got Herschel on the podcast slash show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. But before we get into any bigger things, you know, one of my big dogs to the right, he going to let you know how we, you know, how we start the show. So we do this uh, introduction. It's called uh, Play No Games. And we like to talk about something that uh, we don't play no games about. It could be positive. It could be negative. It could be about what happened today. Could be about something that happened in the past, whatever. But you play no games about this. What you got for us? Oh, I'm first. Yeah, you first. You know (laughs) what I play no games about? It happened to me today. Waiting in lines for food. I don't do it. I try not to do it. I need a reservation on where I'm going. I'm not waiting in lines for food. I play no games about that. I do not play. Ooh. Okay. (sighs) Somebody hungry. Uh, hungry. <laughs> like, I can eat, you know? <laughs> like, COVID is real, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Lines at restaurants. So, Don't play. 
I have a question for you. So when, uh, by no means, this is not being racist or racial. Um, so when the Popeye's chicken sandwich was out and there was a line for that or Krispy Kreme, you were just like, fuck that. That didn't, ha- no, no line for that. I remember driving past the, the <laughs> Popeye's, the black, you know, the good Popeye's, the black Popeye's over here by the black Safeway over here on MLK. And um, yeah, every time there was a line, I would just drive on past because it's not that serious. I will wait, you know? So I got lucky, but I did get one a couple, you know, a couple weeks before it got like super, super crazy. So, oh, yeah. what about y'all? How'd y'all, uh, how'd y'all fare in that uh, see, war of chicken? That chicken war. <laughs> uh, I I didn't eat none of that, so because uh, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm vegetarian over here. So. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, he listen. Yeah. He's the saint of the podcast. the saint of the podcast. Well, Luke. no, I'm not. I just like to you know do better for my body. For my body will do good for that's good. If yeah, super random. Super random. I actually read an article that a chick actually, I forget if it was in the U.S. or another country, but, like, she was hospitalized because she was holding her farts. What the, what? Where the fuck did this come from? Take care of your body. Where did, where did this come from? I just, like you were saying, you take care of your body. We, you know, sometimes you don't, you shouldn't hold your farts. So I thought that was kind of relevant. How is that so irrelevant? then, well, so are we transitioning into our first topic then? No. Since we're talking about farts? Oh, okay. No. no. I'm not <laughs> running this I'm clearly. I'm ready. Well, I was ready. I was, ready. I was like, he was talking he about health stuff. I learned something today because I remember telling some people I've been involved with, and I was joking. I was be joking, but kind of serious because French Montana is like, my girl never farts in front of me. And I was like, yeah, French Montana, you right. And then, Passing jokes, you know, some people I have situationships with. I was like, ah, don't fart around me. I was a joke, but like, <laughs> you weren't joking. I was Absolutely joking. Not was joking. he joking? No. <laughs> Can you zoom no. in on the? No, he wasn't joking. Mm-mm. Let him know. Hershey. He wasn't joking. <laughs> what are you talking talk about? I'm, I only think I'm saying that is because <laughs> I thought it was a joke. If you hold your farts, it actually like hurts you. Like the like, I just learned something. Today, so sorry. Never mind. I, I'm sorry, but no. So, what you playing no games about then, Robert? Oh me. Oh, you know what? You know what I don't play no games about. Um, I don't play no games about dating culture. Oh. Um, no. yeah, some interesting things happen. Th- some interesting things happen to your boy over the last two to three weeks. Mm. Um, how and, many of them? Wow, I'm a. Uh, I'm, I'm respectful. <laughs> Anywho, um, let me just say this. <laughs> I don't want to play no games about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say okay, okay. anything. I'm listening. <laughs> I don't want to play no games about dating culture, and I will say this in a more positive light: like people saying their intentions. I want to share with the show because I feel like we always talk about like the the situations or the nuances. But like, I ran to two different people, and we went on dates, and that person was like, "Oh, I'm not that interested." And I appreciated that. Like, it was mutual, uh, or not mutual, uh, what do you call it? It was, you know, received. Spoken. Spoken. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I respect that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, if it can always be this simple, rather than someone's like, hmm, how can I milk this to the extreme? So I just want to say shout out to uh, what we always preach here about intentionality. Oh, I thought you were about to put their name out there. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Robert's a professional. I will, well, we'll just say if I'm pushing mm. the edge, but like, no, I just want to say, uh, I had two cause people wouldn't, uh, dignify that as like positive encounter. That was yeah. a positive encounter for me where I'm yeah. like, I'm moving on our, our, our intentions and stuff don't add up. So I just want to say, I don't play no games about that because I feel like oh. we're putting that energy out into the world and it's being received, man. Absolutely. It just didn't pan out for your boy. Yeah, what you got to say? You got something to add to that? Mm-mm. And I'm saying that's that's very positive, like sending out your intentions and making sure that you're dating with purpose, it seems like, in Portland. And just a general outlook, people don't date with purpose. So, yeah, it's good that, you know, you experience that. So, yeah. Absolutely. I think I think that is uh, 100% what uh, the intentions really should be when it comes to dating, right? Like, yeah. the, in the for the long haul, for the short haul, like even if it's just – like letting people understand and know like what your intention is behind the interaction, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But I will say one thing before I let oh. my good brother go. Here Fellas, we go. Let me tell you something. If you make a plan and she don't say nothing, don't say nothing back. Let me tell you a quick funny story. And this was like one of those weird weirdo, weirdo chicks. 
we didn't end up going on a date, right? And then she texts him. He's like, are you mad at me? I said, what? She's like, I didn't, we didn't go on a date. I was like, things happen. And I just say that, fellas, because, you know, you don't have to text them back. If they, you got to put the ball into their court, because I promise you, three weeks after the fact of me not responding to that, she responded back to me. She's like, oh, I still want to get to know you. And I was like, bet, you decide. You you put that energy. And you know what happens when you put that energy out there? What happened? She played herself again. That's all I got to say. We ain't playing no games around here. There we go. But I hear her there. <laughs> Okie dokie, Smokey. I want to play no games about cars, man. Cars, for real. Cars. For the young folks listening, for the old folks listening, man, these cars, uh, they a lot of work, real expensive, Oof. and get on my goddamn nerves. Get um, yeah, a lot of work, real expensive, <laughs> and get on my goddamn nerves. And these gas prices, I seen the gas price today was 5 45 and i said oh hell to the no uh, i ain't driving <laughs> uh but nah just just to that fact of like man like people rush to get cars people want a car this that car and don't recognize like the the long-term financial burden it puts you in but then it's also like yeah there can be an asset to it in a in a way of getting places and making stuff happen or moving things or whatever the case may be that your car provides for you. But insurance-wise, add up. Repair-wise, that motherfucker add up. Tires, gasoline, add up. (laughs) (laughs) Gasoline. (laughs) Oh, man. I just, you know, it it was kind of a frustrating thing for me today. I had to to do some spark plugs in my, my car today. They told me at the shop it was going to be $400. So I said, let me For go. some spark plugs? Yeah. So I took them spark plugs. Got <laughs> I got uh, six of them things for 60 bucks, and uh, I put them in myself today. So I felt oh, pretty look good. Look at you, you man's man. No, 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 no. I'm just still pissed off at fucking cars. But, you know, <laughs> we got it done, taken care of. So. Do you drive like a like an expensive one to fix? Uh, I deem not. Uh, I drive a Nissan Pathfinder. Okay. So yeah, nothing, nothing nice. too crazy. I ain't, I ain't in the the Beamer section or the Maserati or nothing. No, I'm not good. neither am I. So, <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah, but yeah. Sweet. Well, um, I appreciate all of us sharing those glorious things, and I think this is a perfect time for us to get into a little bit more about you, my good man. Perfect. So. <laughs> Um, I'll just say this before we get into content, and that is, I'm put you on spotlight. Yeah, yo, when I started a show in podcast, right, and I was lining up a guest list. <laughs> let me tell y'all. Let me tell you the first motherfucker in my DMs. This guy, and I just want to ask you because. No cap. This is like way before, like. Time out. So what took so damn long then? We're about to say this. And I just want to say I'm glad that I'm happy to finally get you on. I'm excited to be here. And Thank you for having me. I want to say number one supporter right here. And why did it take so long, huh? It took a while because our schedules didn't match. Number one. Okay. Hold on, wait. We got a couple. We got a couple. Number two, life was lifing, you know. Through breakups and just summertime sadness things and just busyness of life. Uh Life just lifed. Um, But I'm glad we're here now. So, yeah. All right. I just want (laughs) to let y'all know that. So, I just want to step into just more of your career for so people can get to know you. So, um, please tell us a little bit more about the marketing, the digital content that you've done. Who, what is... Who is Herschel, the career man? Um, I guess it depends on who's asking, but since it's you, I'll give you the real answer. (laughs) Yeah! Um, We ain't playing no game. Herschel, the career man, is a little all over the place, to be very honest. I went to school um, for psychology because I thought I wanted to, you know, go into school counseling and do that um, because I really liked, you know, helping people and I just, like, 
you know, just being around children, they're great. They keep you young. It's fun and just helping people. Um, so kind of a career in that. Um, but then I've always been a creative at heart. Like I've always had a camera in my hand. I've always been creative since elementary school. And so I wanted to kind of merge psychology and creativity. So I went into marketing, um, did a lot of social media work for various large and small businesses here in the Portland area uh, with uh, various people. Um, so that was really fun. And then that kind of catapulted me uh, into, I did a little bit of social work too when I got out of school. Um, but yeah, marketing kind of took over. So I catapulted me into my career, my marketing career at Lyft. So that was really cool. I got to do a lot of hands-on marketing, email marketing, a little bit of everything. Um, and yeah, it kind of just took off from there. So a little bit of psychology, a little bit of marketing, um, just kind of all over the place, wherever I can kind of fit in, wherever I can kind of gain skills. So right now I'm working at an e-commerce company in partnership. So that's completely separate from marketing. Um, but yeah, just being able to kind of gain skills and use them to move me and our people forward. So it's kind of, kind of a little bit of everything. So would you so you you got a degree in psychology yes do you feel like you use your degree and what you do marketing was i feel like i used my degree a lot more when i was doing marketing um, because marketing was a lot of how do i influence people to buy um how do i influence people to click how do i influence people to kind of interact with a product um mm -hmm. that i'm using so a little bit of psychology with that like do people like ctas in the front of an email or the back of an email do they like the color red or pink you know just kind of little cues like that so a little bit more in marketing and then right now i'm kind of using psychology i.e like is this person kind of a type A personality? So making sure to have meeting notes that are, you know, correct and having an agenda and this, that, and the other. So it's kind of just weaved into a little bit of everything. So mm -hmm. not necessarily, um, you know, counseling and like psychology, like you have your degree in, but uh, just very Stop. different, Stop. just very, very, very Stop. useful in just general life and getting to know people and just working with people. And yeah. So no, that's super dope. Yeah. So one of the things I definitely want to like ask you is when it when it comes to body of work, uh, one of the things that I saw that was really interesting, and I know maybe um, Arthur, I don't know if you were around when this happened, but like a uh, bike, the Nike bike, yes, like that was a pretty big thing uh, for us, like. For me coming back from college and seeing like, why are these bikes in the yeah. parking spot? Yeah. And now I have the person to blame because you're a part of that. And kind of. So anytime kind of. we need to fix like the house and <laughs> problem, all this stuff, <laughs> Nike bike. Yeah. So uh, yeah, now we have one of the people who've caused this problem. Well, but please, please tell us about the con campaign about that. Yeah, wait, hold on. Wait, not caused it. Hold on. I was just on the marketing team. Um, that was that. Well, hold on. Wait, that bike town was in development way before I even got there. So they, you know, Peabot put the stations up, you know, the city approved it. Nike did their design. So I was just kind of at the tail end of it. You could have stopped this. Yeah. No, I couldn't have stopped this. I could have <laughs> not. I could not have stopped this. How Those were way. Those are in place way before I got there. It's, but it's crazy that you talk about the Nike bikes because I know one of the designers of of the sec first generation Nike bike and the second generation Nike bike. Uh, which one? Which uh, iteration? The first generation, the blue one. No, no. Uh, oh my goodness, this is so bad. I should know this because I worked on the campaign, but it was three years ago. What was it? What um, affinity group? Do you remember? No, I just know one of the person who did the artwork for the bike. This is so bad. I should know this. Wow. Oops. Um, well. Yeah. And she, she did. She, so she did the first generation. Well, they're all awesome. They all looked great. All the artists did a really great job. So. Yeah. <laughs> shout yeah. out to, shout out to you. Yeah. And, she, and when she, she won it, um, won that opportunity to do it, it was like an amazing thing for her. And she's, she's a real dope artist and she does a lot of stuff for Nike too. So. Yeah. Like the, those affinity bikes, they were really um, big in the community. We, that um, project started, I want to say, I don't I don't want to give the wrong date, but it started out of just um, wanting to highlight, you know, people in the different affinity groups in the communities in Nike. Um, and they pulled people. So there was a, um, oh my goodness, this is so bad. Black History Month bike, Asian History Month bike, Native American bike, and just kind of different affinity groups. So we uh, made sure to 
work with people that were local in the community, making oh, sure that we were okay. working with people that, you know, obviously had great designs, but, you know, knew the culture and knew kind of what we wanted to do and bring community into the bike town space. Um, so that was a really cool project to be a part of for the last, I believe I did the last like three or four of those. I helped kind of Never market really. that. <clears throat> yeah. That's so it was really great. So it was a great program. Absolutely. So super dope, man. Big popping over here. I mean, just a little bit, a little bit. Nah, 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 a, nah, nah, a part nah. of some great things. Yeah. Big popping over here. <laughs> hey, don't 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 cast a shadow on yourself. Yeah, I was very blessed with some of the opportunities that I've had for sure. So yeah. Hmm. So take us. Let's just say because you know we want to hook them in with Nike because they're like, oh, everyone's like, oh yeah, Nike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know that's going to further validate you for people to be like, oh yeah, we're going to stay and listen more. Yeah. But please tell people the process. It doesn't have to be with the bike town that mm-hmm. you worked on, but like when it comes to marketing, let's just say there's like a 17, 18 year old listening to this. What's the process of getting into and building a campaign? Because I feel like a lot of people don't understand what a campaign is. They think it's like presidential stuff, but like what does a campaign mean in marketing? Um, So I worked on a campaign that was across all eight systems. It was essentially trying to get user stories for um, our social channels. It was essentially, I think it was called like the Why Bike Campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, And we really wanted to promote a, just all of our um, low income programs. We wanted to promote um, just the different uh, diversity of the people that were using our systems. And so that marketing campaign was centered around gathering user stories. So it really just kind of depends on what kind of marketing campaign you're trying to do. That one specifically was just highlighting just the people that rode our bikes, the low income program, and just, you know, getting user stories for social so we could show real people using our product because people are more apt to use a product that they see people that look like them yeah. use. So um, it really just kind of depends. So we um, broke people up into different user groups, um, different email lists, uh, making sure that we kind of gathered um, their kind of data and in a way that made sense, um, put together a campaign for each of the different markets, you know, because the way you speak to somebody in Portland is different than the way you speak to someone in New York. So mm. making sure that the images and the copy were specific to that region. Um, and then working with creatives, designers, um, or in-house creatives and designers, and sometimes out, outside creative and designers to make sure that, you know, it was going to grab the audience and making sure to send the email to the right people at the right time. Um, so really kind of making sure that, um, that was sent at the right time and all of our other email campaigns weren't kind of, um, colliding with that as well. And so just really, it was just knowing your audience kind of knowing the copy, knowing the images that you want to use, um, figuring out um, what you're going to say and why you're going to say it and what the CTA is, so the call to action, um, and then deploying Mm. your kind of email campaign or marketing campaign, whatever it is. So, you know, they're all just very different. It really just kind of depends on the product and kind of what you're testing or what you want to see. So, Man, you sound real freaking busy. (laughs) <laughs> real yeah. freaking busy what's the day in the life of you when you wake up and and make your coffee in the morning what happened what like what's your day in the life you know never too busy never too busy for for you guys so yeah i made it hey, um day in the I life respect that. so day in the life now um since i have i have this new role i'm about two months in so i just wake up um i like going to the office i love the Hey, happy Monday. Hey, oh, are you getting coffee? Hey, do you want to go to lunch? I love that little small talk. Like, I love being connected to people in that way because I was sitting at home for two years just, like, looking at myself in the mirror. You know what I mean? And working remote. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was just going crazy. I I, I thrive (laughs) on just kind of personal connection. So I wake up, um, shower, brush my teeth, kind of do that whole thing. (laughs) Duh. Um, Make a little breakfast. Check my email. I doom scroll a little bit on Instagram. Ah, uh, the black be, hole. Yeah, the black hole. To be a little honest, yeah, I doom scroll for about an hour just to kind of see what's what's trending and what what I missed. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the start. What questions? I have a question. So we yes. had a uh, mm-hmm. uh, we had a dope guy on here maybe a couple weeks ago. His name was Roz. Real real solid dude, and he was talking about uh, 
taking like social media breaks and he was talking about like oh, i think i watched that yes oh wow look at you yeah yes yeah. but please summarize for the people who haven't well go hey. guy please watch that episode and he was talking about taking a tech break and i know what marketing like you say you gotta have your phone glued to your hand 100 percent. and i have to ask for you do you take tech breaks when it comes to like hey like you know i know you do that for work right mm -hmm. but like do you ever think or do you ever have a moment where you're like, you know, I'm not even going to be on my phone? So when I was at Lyft specifically, since I was running, I was helping run socials, um, I did not take tech breaks and I should have. And tech is very much like that, specifically marketing and tech. It is very fun. I had a blast. I regret <laughs> nothing. But <laughs> oh shit! no, I really I really I had a blast. I, I loved Lyft as a company and, and working with Nike and all that. But it, it very much blended your personal and, and work life, you know, mm. on your phone. Cause yeah. you're signed into multiple Instagram accounts. You're signed into multiple Twitters. You're signed into multiple, whatever. And so you're, you, you're just kind of, kind of constantly working a little bit. So consumed. I didn't take text, right? Yeah. Consumed. Then you have mm -hmm. Slack on your phone, email on your phone, and you're constantly just trying to chase the trend or make sure you're, you know, Dang. things are hitting numbers. So I personally did not take tech breaks at that job. And then when I moved into my digital marketing role at Nike, that was specifically app driven. So again, I always literally my phone was part of my job. So no tech breaks there. And then I yeah. moved into a different role at a bank, um, and it was very lower stress. And so thankfully, I was able to take all of the email and those kind of crazy notifications off of my phone and have more of a break. And that was for about six months, six seven months. And so now I'm kind of back in it. So personally. No, I don't know how to take tech breaks. But, uh, you know, I took a, I there, took a six month one is there a with that bank job. Is it is there a difference knowing from going from that high intensity to like maybe like a medium? Like, do you feel different now? I feel different in the role that I'm in now because yeah. I'm not specifically in social. You know, so shout out to Roz, you right, bro? Yeah, bro, you right? Yeah. God yeah. dang, it's different. It's a lot yeah. different. I, I social yeah. is amazing. It it's it's created brands your brand is running on social and huh. so it's just yeah like it's it's great social media is great but yeah it's just it's it's a little consuming when you have to do it for work too so yeah <laughs> interesting do you guys take tech breaks yes all the goddamn time <sighs> i love that and do you uh, do you work in like any kind of media kind of what do you no no so I, w I work at a high school i do camp security so i don't i don't need my do you mom. love that I, I would love that. Like, Can you stop messing with stuff? Like, you know, no, <laughs> it's different. No, it has its ups and its downs. It has its perks. Definitely. Like yeah. I love the aspect of what I do mm -hmm. in the face of like interacting with students every day, meeting new people, engaging, being aware of my surroundings and things like that. Cause I grew up doing that. And mm -hmm. so like that part becomes real easy for me. Um, does it get real repetitive and boring sometimes? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not at a school where there's something going on every day. So it's like that aspect of things get boring. Yeah. Like I'm I'm not saying I want to break up a fight every day, but on the same stint, like high school now is not really entertaining like it used to be when You're, I was in high school. High school was fun. Okay. I had a time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like <laughs> in that aspect of things, it's kind of low-key kind of boring and mm -hmm. i feel like now i just chase kids around the hallway tell them to get back to class and that gets boring after a while because it's like yeah repetitive yeah it's real repetitive so like do i like my job yes absolutely do i hate the repetitive of it yes i do yeah. um do i like the interaction i have with a lot of students yeah i know 95 percent of the students at the school because I, I didn't have a conversation with most of them so i love that aspect of it and that's really important too so to have someone that's not your teacher or your parent just kind of someone that you look up to so yeah, you. yeah. Someone's gonna mention you in their um, graduation speech or wedding speech one day. I promise. Watch. Yeah. Hey. I remember that security guy? He was he was real. He was great, and he talked to me about X, Y, and Z. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Good man, for you. I, I enjoy it, man. I do. definitely do. What about you, Rob? You take tech breaks? Tech breaks? Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not too minimal. I'm, I was tripping out. I was like, is that? I was like, is that cord not connected? I was like, fuck. But I think it is connected. I think that's. Um, but anywho, it's not here or there. Do I take tech breaks? Um, I want to say yes and no. Sorry, this is going to bother me. I have to check. We back. Sorry. I had to check because. I seen that earlier. I just didn't say nothing. 
Say shit. <laughs> so <laughs> you messed up the camera. I didn't mess up and, the camera. Not you. <laughs> you messed up the camera, and then you wasn't going to say if something was plugged in or not? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Like, Slipping. Stop. Uh, Do I take take breaks? Uh, <laughs> um, no. I, the reason why I don't take tech breaks is because uh, right now I can't. But when it comes to, um, and I t- and I kind of like uh, attribute tech breaks to like, because you know, play no games podcast. Look here, matchmaking. I'm the only person who's like really like ninety percent doing that mm-hmm. for the most part. And I think like the big portion of it is like. I'm grinding and doing all this stuff until we get the right person to do it. Like a person like you, we're like, that makes sense. Who's in the world. We're like, I'm doing the bare minimum, but even doing like the bare minimum is like a lot. But one of the things I tell people about tech is I know why. And this kind of leads us into the next question too, as well. Where it's kind of like, I know that Robert, Rob, I'm a brand. And what a lot of people don't think is like, yeah, when I do social media, I always like, I'm trying to have fun, mm-hmm. be inspirational, and I post what I want to. I post what I want to post, and every time I do s- things like that, to me, social media is not more or less a chore. Even though when I have to post things about the show, post things about this, things mm-hmm. like that, that has turned into like even though I like doing it, I know what you're talking about. It's a chore. I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, fuck, I gotta film this. This is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I gotta I, for people of audio. I hit myself with the mic, so you got some feedback. But anyway, it's kind of like I have I've created like this manageability where I'm like, all right, when I'm on my personal, mm-hmm. boom, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. Right, I'm minding my business. Yeah, and me, I just I just grew up in an age where like I knew when to play outside and I knew when to play my video game. So I I knew when I was like, ah, I'm gonna like get away from that. So I think I'm pretty balanced, but I'm also pretty purposeful what I post. So like. Um, I love when people think they can pin pin me down like oh Rob's feeling like this. I just like playing sad songs like yeah. Don't Rob's love. Um, I'm always you know love struck and and hurt, but it's like <laughs> I'm functional. <laughs> but um, I think for me that kind of leads me into like branding. Yes, and um, as you know, in our lovely government, you know, corporations are people. So yeah. I'm like three people. Yeah. AJ's three people, or since you're on the pod, because you have like, he's like four people. I'm three people. Um, so I want to ask you, when it comes to brand building and building a brand and marketing, what does that mean and look like for you in your world? Um, it's funny because as I was getting into marketing, I had to pivot, um, which is why my Instagram name doesn't match my my real name. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny, but I mean, it's true. Like I had to kind of pivot cause my brand was, or excuse me, the way I was presenting myself on social wasn't as professional as it is now. And so I try to, you know, keep my content, um, you know, P PGG rated and just, you know, make it look nice for the people just cause I like the aesthetic. So branding, um, really is just knowing your audience, knowing where to meet them, knowing what they like, um, and just speaking to them in a way that makes sense, but is authentic to you. Um, so even though I'll be maybe at a bar or I'll be at a club, I'll probably do like a boomerang of like the lights or just like a boomerang of like the drink with like a little sparkle in it. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's, it's what I'm doing, but it's, you know, professional. It's like, oh, he's here. And it's like kind of a more polished version of (coughs) what I am doing, you know? So yeah. And Uh, that's what my Instagram's about. And it's, it's just you know, brands are, you know, kind of what you are and how you kind of portray yourself. So, okay. That's, yeah. That's dope, man. It, it's it's hard for me. I'm not a big social media person, like, as a whole. Good for you. And I'm trying to get like that. And it, so, like, people are always like, you need to be on social media and post this and post that. No, you, you do don't. all this. You do all that. And it's like, man, I'm more of an action person. So, like, if I had a camera strapped to me, great. But yeah. outside of that, if I'm mm-hmm. doing something, my phone is in my pocket or it's across the room, it's in whatever. Like, yeah. I'm not focused on recording what I'm doing because I'm more focused on what I'm doing. And so I think that, for me, is what makes it hard for me to, like, do all four of my pages, three pages or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, I'd rather just be in the moment, live in that moment instead of recording the moment. Because now you're not 
doing it for you. It's you're doing it for other people to see what you're doing. And so I, I um, you know, so that's I think that's where I get lost in my branding aspect, and that's why my brands aren't where I want them to be, um, because I'm not deliberately just recording just to record, just to put on something. Like I'd rather show people what I'm doing instead. So yeah, we'll see. It's also a lot of work too. Yeah, I mean, because it sounds like you have multiple brands. It's like that's yeah. time out of your day, and it sounds like you have a full time job and. You know, your car that she, that you fix. You know what I mean? But do you know what I mean? Like that takes that stuff takes time. Like the time mm-hmm. that you were putting in the spark, but that could have been on social, but it's like you, you know, you have other stuff going on. So it's not I mean, I, I like I wish I was more inclined to live in the moment. I'm trying to do better about that, to like put my phone down when I'm at a dinner or put my phone down when I'm at a bar or, cl- or hanging with friends or just speaking to my parents because it's like you will m- you'll miss things if you're just recording so mm-hmm. good for you i mean obviously brand building is important so try to you know do as much as you can but <laughs> it's good that you're not in the kind of habits that i've developed as a marketer and as a kind of creative person so but i don't know I, but i also think it's, it's a part of your job right that's so like, true when it comes to being good at what you do, you have to be doing it. Yeah. And so I think in that aspect, you doing it for work and getting paid for what you do, it becomes easy to do it on your own because yeah. you're already getting paid to do it. So, and that's a, that's the other piece that I think people have to begin to recognize is like, you know, if, and this is what I tell the kids all the time, they want to be TikTok famous, but none of them know how to dance. It'd be like, you don't even know how to dance. You want to be TikTok famous. It's like, you got to know how to dance. So yeah. when you broadcast yourself, people see that you can dance already that's how you become famous right and it's like and it's like for you and that my thought is that same thought right like you're already doing this for work so when you post things yeah you know how to make it so it's efficient you know how to make it so that it, it's the lighting's right mm-hmm. you know how to make it so where it hit you know when time to post it because you be posting it at the right time for your other stuff right that's real so yeah. it hit right so mm-hmm. now it's like it just becomes second nature for you posting yeah. for yourself so yeah and this is why i love this guy over here because this sets me up to say so when you gonna you know come over here and you know you know help us out Ah. well we'll set something up we talked about it on the phone i still need a pitch deck people (laughs) off camera oh my bad oh i was trying to make you guys comfortable oh yeah i'm comfy yeah no um soon (laughs) soon very soon is the right right answer all right all right (laughs) but you know what I want to, we kind of are leading, leaning on this because like the synergy right now is crazy. We want the cheat codes. Cheat codes for what? Social media. When's the right time to post? When is, um, how do we get something to trend? Um, how do we get, how do, how do we blow this shit up? What is, what's the cheat codes? Do you know with Instagram specifically, I'm speaking specifically on Instagram, it's, always changing the algorithm literally changed three or four times even when i was just that lift for that year and so there's no like even now um i read an article on twitter i want to say a couple days ago when i was doom scrolling in the morning part of my morning routine um that hashtags now are not going to be like they're going to be grouped but they're not going to be kind of as as it used to be? Yeah, something something along those lines, something about that. So it's like, I'll make sure to also kind of have creative content that people really want to see um, because hashtags aren't going to be as kind of prevalent as they used <gasps> to be in v- via Instagram. I'm going to have to find the article. I don't want to misquote the article, but honestly, there's there's really, really no cheat codes. You really just have to put out great content that your audience wants to, audience wants to hear and see. Um, follow the right people. Um, you know, kind of follow trends a little bit, but also kind of have your own spin on it. And um, just depending on also making sure that you're on the right channels. I don't do well on YouTube because I'm not a video person. I'm more of a photo person. So I do well on Instagram. See, Um, I also don't do very well on Facebook because I don't write copy or have photos for kind of an older audience. My audience is younger, like 20s to kind of late 30 you know what I mean so I have to meet my audience where they're at so it really just depends on that as well so you're just gonna have to kind of test test and try it really just depends sorry there's no cheat codes here (laughs) 
But there are, I mean, there are things you can do. You can, you can try posting twice a day and seeing kind of what your, what your rate is. You can try posting once a day, like at 12 and then once a day at like five and see kind of what the engagement is. Like um, there's things that you can like test and try. So 12 and five is a good, good time. To post. 12 people are at lunch usually. I mean now, I mean, since COVID every, most people are working from home if they're lucky enough to do that. Five people are kind of getting home from work. They're unwinding. They're kind of on their phone. So that's, those are kind of my general rules. But again, sometimes I post something and it gets 30 likes. Sometimes I post something and it gets 130 likes. It's really, it really just depends. It also depends on what it is. Cause I get more engagement on like photos of myself, like laughing or like having a drink in my hand or like me with friends rather than just posting like a really cool photo of like a building or like a pathway. So it really just, you really got to meet your audience where they're at. So yeah, if that's helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Put us up on game a little bit. Yeah. Got me thinking. But you guys are doing really well. You guys have a color scheme going on. You guys have diverse guests. You really do. So, I mean, you're halfway there. No, cause I've, I've been on, uh, I shouldn't say been on. I've seen and been on um, a few podcasts where it's all it's it's very much the same type of person, kind of talking about the same type of thing. And you guys are, yeah, very diverse and different. It's great. This is why this is why I wanted to come on here. You know, that, you got to support black businesses, and you got to you know you know that uh, keep keep it going. That warms the heart. Yeah, that warms the heart because that's what we try to do, um, and um, I guess. I just want to like really have, I, don't, I hate when people say, let's have real conversations. Yeah. Cause this is a real conversation. Um, but like, it's like, I tried to bring the element of like, you know, how I would talk to you, you know, off camera. I feel like that's important. And I yeah. feel like that actually makes a podcast and a show like go, like when you're mm. that person's person out, when you're, when you are your personalities, I just made my personality into a show. Like, that's why I'm like, this is why, this is why I'm like, of course, Arthur fits like he like he's in the arena of like this works like this builds the world and like um, building that comfortability for people to be like, you know what? I can shoot the shit with this person right now. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like I'm trying to extract, you know, like so much information out of you. It's boring. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Oh, no. Well, um, hmm. this leads me to. uh <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of extracting information. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of extracting information, um, I have something to turn the corner for all of us. Oh, shit. Uh, wasn't expecting this. Dun, 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 dun. Wasn't expecting this. What is that? Oh, What's no. happening? You know, I'm going to my handy dandy um, notes. Notes, because uh, I have some things for us. <laughs> and as we wait, I have a. Because Portland is, uh, as we talked about, because, you know. As you know, because you've been following us, we started off strictly relationships, then we opened things up. Now we just talk about this. Now we on all these different things. But I want to ask you this thing I came across. Mm -hmm. uh, it was plum interesting. Oh, wrong notes. <laughs> uh, where's this at? Where's that? I was just looking at this. Is it something that I posted online? No. I'm oh, not okay. Coming for you just yet. Um, just yet, ladies and gentlemen. Where's this at? Where's that's sorry, I was just I just this one. Absolutely. Wait, one more question while Robert okay. tries to find that. I'm yeah. gonna ask something. Okay, I found it. As soon as you want to talk. Oh <laughs> go okay. ahead. Uh so my my question is like with with everything that you're doing, like what is one of your when is one of your goals? Me? Yeah. You. What do you mean? Like <laughs> with the marketing, with the with all oh, the photography, like the arts, the the creative space, like, what is one of your goals with this? Like, you, what what is your... You know, just overall, I, as a brown person, as a queer person, I did not see myself in a lot of advertisements or see myself in a lot of mm -hmm. movies, TV shows, things like that. So um, working with a lot of brands that I've worked with, I kind of try to work with or work to put more kind of diverse faces in the marketing in the ads in the whatever because growing up I didn't see a lot of that mm. and so I would say one of my goal I mean I kind of a little bit out of the marketing game now but one of my goals was when I was in it just to kind of show more diverse faces mm. <laughs> show that people that look like me you guys you know um do you have a place just in the world because historically we didn't for a really long mm. time and so I guess that would be one of my goals, just kind of diversifying the media a little bit um, in the things that I touch specifically, which is why 
um, kind of the Lyft Bike Town collection was so great because we, again, just kind of diversified the space with all the different affinity groups that we were able to highlight. So, yeah. S- wonderful question. Wonderful question. Wonderful answer. I actually, that kind of made me think this too as well. Do you feel like when you go into these spaces, do you feel like people tokenize your identity to fit into a box where I know you just said <laughs> black, queer, yeah. where they're like, oh yeah, you know, we get Black History Month on February and then, you know, Pride Month the next month. Perfect. Do <sighs> you yeah. feel like you experience that a lot? I'm trying to answer this very carefully. Um, oh, they'll buy me watching this show. <laughs> you just, well, yeah, just, yeah. Um, <laughs> Nobody watches this show. We don't get views. Oh, yes, you do. So I, huh. Hey, we, we ready to play no games. I, on, well, hold, on. I'm, listen, I'm also not trying to ruin my career. You're not going to ruin uh, your career. <laughs> so I don't, okay. So as a person that has worked in tech and just kind of corporate e America um, in various places, I can say, honestly, in some of the jobs that I have had, yes, I felt tokenized, and that's just because of the corporation in some of them I have not. So it really just depends on the corporation you're in, what their core values are, you know, what they believe in and things like that. And with a lot of, I've, I, I've had friends that are in kind of the bigger, you know, corporations that, yeah, they definitely feel tokenized because, you know, Pride Month is in June and they only ask them to do kind of certain marketing things and pull these certain people in June for oh, whatever. June? Oh. Yeah, Pride oh. Month, yeah, June. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was March, my bad. Oh, no, that's okay. I mean, yeah, that's St. Patrick's oh. month, day, whatever. But uh, so, so, <laughs> I, so, <laughs> so in certain, certain corporations, yes, feel tokenized. Other ones, no, it really just kind of depends on who you're working for and what you're doing. So, yeah, but generally, I mean, yeah, corporate America tokenizes – brown body so have you felt that way in your kind of career at all oh in education in education uh, it's definitely i wouldn't say tokenized it's definitely like uh an afterthought um mm, just yeah. because you don't see a lot of black and brown teachers yes. in education mm-hmm. you only see them in like support services like supporting staff so yep. you see them as the custodial staff you see them as uh like uh um organizations in the building you'll see them as rj coordinators you'll see them as uh people that help with like special needs students Mm -hmm. like you don't see them as like superintendents yeah Yeah. superintendents principals no we have i mean we have one we have one secretary at our school who's black and then you have uh, a vp who's black um but outside of that like all you see is black supporting staff. You don't see we have one black male teacher and that's it. Like crazy. So yeah, that's it, it's, yeah. That's how it was even when I was in high school. So, so in that aspect of like tokenism, I wouldn't say it's it's more it's it's just more like <clears throat> stepped on. Like, oh, we have enough black people here. Mm-hmm. We good. Mm-hmm. And it's and especially I was gonna say also in where we live at like portland (laughs) specifically because like i have a friend a really good friend uh, that lives in dc and she had black teachers all growing up you Mm -hmm. know because she lived in um a really nice part of dc and well i guess in corporate in the corporate world now there's still not a lot specifically tech there's not a lot of black women or a lot of not a lot of black and brown men so i guess even i guess even when you live in dc or other places we still kind of get chosen maybe chosen for certain roles for certain reasons so mm. it really just depends yeah also portland yeah we're like five percent black here i think so. i can <laughs> name all my black teachers on one hand mr tidwell mr johnson shout out to mr johnson uh jeff kids hated him because he was keeping people accountable uh yeah mr tidwell mr johnson i think that was all my black teachers i've mm-hmm. had Damn. i've had mr frazier shout out to him Mr. Shelton, he wasn't a teacher. I think he was a dean of students. Yes, we had oh, principal. Oh, oh, that's my yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. oh yeah. Oh yeah, we go way back. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, we go way back the other way. The back. principal. Oh my goodness, this is so sad. Butler, Miss Butler, great, wonderful. Oh, Miss Butler, leader. Um, but that's pretty. 
And then I had a dance teacher in kindergarten. Don't think he's still alive, though. But he was great. Um, he had really long dreads, and he was really nice. But, yeah, that's, yeah, four? And I've been in, what, school is what? Primary school is what, 12 years? That's sad. <laughs> what about yeah. you? I uh, had one black sub, Earl Farmville. <laughs> Shout out Earl Farmville. Uh, and see, he was a su- well. I you know. still have to have a, a teaching license. He, to be so, a sub. so he ended up becoming our teacher because our one of our teachers ended up going doing the sabbatical, um, and so he ended up becoming the teacher. Um, ooh, outside of that, ooh, that's tough. Um, yeah, I just we had black security guard. Um, Black admin staff, and that, but I think that's really about it. Like, I only had like one. Crazy. And this gets me to, and I swear, like, this is why I love what we're doing. Like, I literally posted this on ah, social media because I love this cat. His name is La Russell. Mm. And like, I like him because, yo, he does, he puts out content every day, one rap, 30 seconds, whatever. And he does it all from his house. He's independent. And he, and he posted, and he posted this. He He's said, from the Bay, isn't he? Yep. yep. From the Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, be the example. It's hard to be what you, it's hard to be what you've never seen. And then it's a mm. long thing, but he talked about, he's been around a lot of great men. And he's kind of like, if he was around doctors, lawyers, scientists, that we would definitely see more black doctors lawyers and scientists but he's like the great men that are around me we're rapping we're doing other stuff so he's kind of like mm, it's like the lack of like access of like why what we do so important of all the things that we're doing because we're showing not saying the people who are hooping doing entertainment i'm hell i mean we're doing entertainment for the most part but like we have other identities so i feel like being a great man is what we're doing right here, showing them the different levels and layers of getting it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Respect that. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause I never saw any black marketers. I didn't even know that was a thing yeah. that I could be, you know, a social media person, a person that works kind of in corporate America. Cause my dad was in construction. My mom was a nurse, you know, like I just kind of saw those, those roles as that, but yeah, I never even growing up, never saw or really ran into that. I can think of any, black men or men of color in I guess corporate America yeah now you can look in the mirror and look at yourself I'm just like oh made it (laughs) (laughs) um almost though almost though we're making it so so um I have a question for the group because Uh I got hit with this and I really want to share this with people y'all because I feel like this would be a dope conversation so um, uh-huh. um we're gonna low key out ourselves. Um so I'm gonna start from the, the other end of the spectrum. Um you are you are you single or are you taken? Oh me? Yeah, you. Oh, this is easy. You made oh. it seem like it was gonna be something. I'm single, ready to mingle. I see you fine girls watching me. I'm watching you too. Come holla. <laughs> okay, one twelve. <laughs> um, um, my main man, Herschel, you single? Single. Oh, why are you so quick? <laughs> Anywho, um, uh, Robert. Um, yeah, sir, uh, you got to answer uh, your own question. Answer your own question. What? Uh huh. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am very. Uh, I'm single. Mm. Mm. Yo, bro, bro. Huh? I'm single. So. I came across this conversation with a person and um, mm. I'll just say this. This was very interesting. They asked me, what's more important to you? The spark you have with a person or long-term compatibility? Ooh. And I think this is a perfect thing to get our brains going because Ooh. And I'll say that again for the listeners. What's more important for you? The spark you have with someone or the long-term compatibility? I mean, what's more important is the long-term compatibility, long-term, but the spark is fun. 
Ooh. You know what I mean? Because you'll have different sparks Ooh. with different people at different times in your life. Because I can think of when I was like 18, 19, having a, having a spark with this person. And it was great. And, you know, it kind of fizzled out. And, you know, we weren't meant to be together, whatever. And then just kind of having another one when I was like 21. And just kind of all these little sparks. And it's just fun. But long-term commitment is the goal. But I like a spark. Sparks are fun. So you like, <laughs> you like the chase. A little bit, yeah. It's great. It's fun. You know what I mean? Just the kind of, I eventually want to be in something long term, but sparks okay. are fun. All right. Yeah. <laughs> are they not? Like sparklers, even on 4th of July, sparklers, sparks, it's fun. It's short. <laughs> it's quick. It's to the point, you know? Uh, uh. Yeah. What? What do you, what? <laughs> are you more of a long term? <laughs> I like a spark. See? Wow. But, but, but. But, you know, long term, you know, it kind of beats the heart a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm a softy at heart. Uh, so I, de I definitely like the ride, man. Like, um, But I, I definitely think nowadays a lot of people just want the spark, the instant, yeah. the instant mm. connection. And so, um, which, is, which is great for the short period, like you said. It's yeah. great for a short period of time. But what happens when the real questions are asked? What happens when the real shit happens? Like, yeah. We had a uh, get a, a couple a few weeks ago, and we we talked about like going through the shit and like what happens when you actually have to get into the in depths of that conversation and go through the shit. Does it keep sparkling, or does that sparkle fizz out to the stick part? You know what I'm saying? And now you gotta go get a new sparkle. So yeah. it's like we have to we have to figure figure out and and find those tough questions and find those tough answers. Um, but you know, I think like you said, ultimately everybody likes a spark, but for one lot when I was young I loved the spark because I loved the chase when I was young but I think now as you get older and you continue to climb it's like man that shit gets it gets pointless and it's boring like I don't know that's just me that's my I, opinion yeah, I, see I knew I had the right guys for this shit because I knew I just knew it I, I was saving I was gonna save this for the next week for our next guest but I was like I got some other shit for I got some other shit for but also wait can I elaborate on that also okay, fine, I've fine. always just kind of focused on my career, mm. you know what I mean? And so that long term, Ain't let me question. try to work on X, Y, and Z. No, I'm ready to, you know, move to this, do that. You know, I'm busy doing an event. I'm here, I'm there. You know what I mean? Like I don't, mm. it's just, it's, I guess it's easier for just my life and the life that I've been living just to kind of have like little sparks and little just kind of moments. But mm -hmm. I've had long term relationships, a few, but, um, I, yeah, I don't sparks know. are I don't what? Know. I was, I, I, what? What were you gonna ask? Go ahead. Yeah, what were you gonna ask? I just gave you the side. I was like, mm -hmm. I have. I, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know your resume. I don't know. Yeah. Who, I don't know who you've been with. Oh yeah, just a few. Just a few. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know that. I didn't know them either. Clearly, <laughs> we're not together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I can, I can say the same thing about a few people too. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. What you about you? Spark here. long term. What's up? I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Like I think. I came out the womb a long-term person. A long-term like, person? Where, like, I get the thrill of, like, the spark, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm always, during, like, the initial phase, I'm always like, let's get to our routine. And that makes say, sense. When I say, let's get to our routine, it's like, all right, you already know that, you know, I'm Bob Gill, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm the one. <laughs> you already know that. And I already know that, you know, you know, she the, she the, she the gal. And, like, us building that routine because at the end of the day, I feel like when we synchronize, right, mm -hmm. that synchronization of, like, us, like, vibing, that to me is, like, the spark where I'm, like, oh, I know that she likes uh, uh, lemon hungs on tea with, we'll just say, a cucumber wedge <laughs> on the side of her bed mm -hmm. on Saturday mornings. I like doing that stuff. So, you know. Because I'm dependable. I'm there for you. I'm there for you to grow. And I feel like, I think, to be honest with you, that's what's wrong with dating culture right now. And then I want to also get into that one bit that you said, too, as well, where it's kind of like, there's nothing wrong with being one with someone. And I feel like people get this wrong every time. And I say this in sessions. I say this to the people that a relationship is like two kids hiding in a trench coat, trying to steal candy from a candy store. Mm. When you go up to the person, they're going to look at you as an adult, but you know the inside. 
Someone's on the top. Someone's on the someone's on the bottom. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, you're figuring out who's going to be the top, who's going to be bottom of the day. But you're one unit. But you're two different people. Mm-hmm. How do you move in unison? Because that, don't get me wrong. I've had my whole face. I've done things. I've gone to the dark side. I've been, you know, you know, Prince Future. I've done that shit. Yeah. But like, I feel like as we get older, because I'm a assuming. Look, you see how the mic was going. <laughs> I was like, woo. Um, like at the end of the day, like humans, right? What happens? And y'all don't have to say this, and I want out any any of y'all. When you get home after a long ass day, right? And you click that and you open the door and nobody is there or no one is genuinely asking you how the fuck are you doing i know for me sometimes that's like a lot even though that's like oh whatever so i got shit to do but like sometimes i'm like damn i wish someone was there because i feel like and i'll admit i'll admit i'll say this there's some humans that don't want human compatibility thinking about my ace and arrows people but a lot of people Want to build families. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, not saying we have to rush because, you know, we're in our 30s, but, like, yo, like, people don't think 25 and the next 25, yeah, another 25, you yeah. 50. Yeah. So why are we, but that's my whole, sorry, I had to, you know, I was on my little so, soapbox. <clears throat> real quick, though, what's wrong with finding somebody at 35, 40, 50? <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Like, what's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, like, oh, yeah. having kids and you got 12 kids and now you find somebody at 45 getting 12 remarried. 12 like. children. <laughs> you see his mindset? PDX nah, wouldn't no, no, watch no, no, out. No. He, wants, yeah. he wants 12. No, I don't. Absolutely. I got a dog. That's all I need right now. Hey. <laughs> That's it. All um, right, Rihanna come to you right now and be like, hey. Who? Rihanna come to you right she now. She already got one. Huh? She don't need no, me. She, if Rihanna come to you right now, she already got one. She don't need yeah, me. She's yeah, right she married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You gonna you gonna throw that dog to the side? Like, uh-huh, I'm Rihanna. sure I'm not. Wow. <laughs> I love my dog, Peter. Peter, come get him. I am a loyal man to my companion. I don't care you what female it. comes to the house. She got me doing the dishes. Didn't think she home for some kids. But go ahead, bye, 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 bye. No, but it, it like I think. I think we lose sight and say we set a timetable on ourselves and say we got to find our partner right now. And I think sometimes you don't have to find your person right now because you physically you might not be ready or mentally you might not be ready or emotionally you might not be ready to say, all right, I'm 35. I need to be married. No, you you might not be ready for that. And, you know, if you're still going through your whole phase for the last 10, 15 years, you definitely ain't ready for that. So it's like being able to recognize where you are in your own life and what you want with your own life, but then recognize who you are as yourself. Like, I think when people begin to really learn who their self is, and that is going to be the time for them to really be ready for someone else to, to be in their lives. And I, I think we, and that does that's not a timetable. Like, you can figure yourself out at 40 and be like, damn, I've been fucking up from my, until my 40s and someone come at 41 and you happily married now. You know what I'm saying? And that's just sometimes that's how life works. Um, future wife, if your ass show up at 40, 41, just know you signing all types of prenups. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. I already got a prenup for whoever up next. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, he's got money, y'all. He needs you to sign a prenup. So. I don't got no cash what he's talking about. Let me tell you that. Preen up Robert. I, I will here's here's my thing. I agree there's nothing wrong with that, right? But it's just the responsibility aspect where I feel like when people do know themselves, right? And I feel like this is that faux know themselves, right? Where like, oh, you know, I've stopped having, you know, casual sex for a little bit. Um, I'm doing this and that. Why hasn't our person come to me, right? And then they rush that process and it snowballs and it mm-hmm. does all the different things, right? And I say, I say this to say that where I guess my overarching point is, yeah, those those things and situations happen, right? But like, how 
intentional have you really been mm. for that to really work? Because I know a lot of people who's like, let me really, you know, expunge my criminal record. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, after like, I'm supposed to have this, it's like that arrogance or that air of like, oh, I've done this. I'm supposed to have these things or I'm supposed to have this relationship. Now I'm 30 and 40, but they really know that or they don't know this is that, that underlying ego that they're having that is pushing away that good man. They're that pushing away in that good, um, uh, or, uh, guy or, or whatever. Right. And my thing is we talk about human development, nature versus nurture, right? Why is it so much of a crime for people to learn and understand? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you you with the camera. I was looking at the camera. You, you're looking good, man. You're looking good. You're looking fucking good. <laughs> Thanks, a snack. Robert. Gentlemen, he is single. I'm so done. All Thanks, I'm saying Robert. is it's the whole nature versus nurture thing, right? Yeah. Where we learn all these different things. So why? So I guess my thing is, yeah, it's important to have all those different things. But why can't we be like, all right. Why can't I know myself? Why can't I be instilled to try to f just know the foundational pieces of building a healthy relationship? That's my only thing to that, kick mm -hmm. to that. But <sighs> what you got? Oh, nothing. I'm just listening. What? Do yeah. You, do, you, do, you, do you disagree or do you yeah. agree? I agree. Like, I, I mean, I don't think I came just out of the just out of the womb, just like, oh, I, all I want is sparks, you know, because I've seen what healthy relationships look like. A lot of people have not. Hell yeah. You know, so I haven't. I don't know why you pointing at me. <laughs> look at the monk family. I like them. Oh, well, I know. I know of. But I, yeah, but I didn't see that till later in life. But yeah, like it. You know, I, I know what healthy relationships look like, and I know it's. I'm not gonna say as a psychology major, I know how to like you know read people, but do they it, do. Do it, do it. But um, <laughs> I mean, I know what it takes to make a relationship work, but it just in my experience in dating here, it just hasn't. So, ooh, um, yeah, let's talk about that. You know, yeah, take a swig of water. We gonna let's talk about it. Yeah, so, what's dating like mm. been like for you? Like. The law, I mean, I don't know. Ever since I was just young, there, w I just haven't found, yeah, just anyone to really kind of figure out what a relationship looks like because they've all just kind of been just fleeting. You know what I mean? They're not of substance. They're not dating with intentions like mm. you were saying. So, or we're looking for different stuff. And I mean, more of when I was younger, but even now. So, cause when you're younger, you're just trying to figure yourself out or figure your sexuality out or, you know, just kind of pop through different people. But even now it's just like, people aren't dating with intentionality here, you know? And if they are, they're already in some kind of thruple or partner. It's, it's, it's very different uh, with the community here. Um, well, what kind of guys that, you know, you want? I just need someone to text me back. That's all I need. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn. I be trying to tell you. <laughs> no, uh, honestly, just someone with some goals, someone with some, again, some intentions, um, someone with the mentality to kind of travel and get out of Portland um, every few months or every whenever, because Portland is a wonderful place to be. I love it here. I've been here my whole life, but willingness to kind of travel and explore new things because everything is not here. Mm. Um Mm, let them know. Yeah, uh, preferably someone with a four hundred one k and health insurance. Hey, okay, and a decent relationship with their parents. So wow, you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. I mean it doesn't oh, have to be decent. great. It's oh, a decent. Okay, okay, you decent. Bad, bad. You okay. know, I don't want you to, you to hate your parents unless they. You know, they you have a real reason. But uh, yeah, very simple, very simple things. So yeah, what about you guys? What do you look for in a? And a mate, how has dating been for you here? Um, <laughs> what, what, what was that look for? Uh, I just go for me, like, um, dating for me has been interesting. I think I, I've I've lost a lot of intention as of late into my dating aspect of stuff. Um, I think just because I'm going through a little bit of more transition phase of my life, um. And I think I'm being more intentional with certain people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that aspect of things is going to kind of propel me a little bit more forward. But uh, for me, Portland ain't it. Um, just like, Can you say that one more time for the uh, people in the back? Um, Portland Portland ain't it. I'm just, I, I just have to, to throw that out there. No, you know what? I'm going to rep my city for once. I'm the real 
Rob time. Not the other time. It's Rob time. I'm, I'm putting the CD on my back. For I me. love Portland. That's not what I'm saying that for. But dating in Portland is not it. Let me. I, 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 have, I have to say that. <laughs> okay, here's my here's my only thing. Here's my only thing. And you're going to have to explain. I can at least just say for me or what I've observed. I feel like in Portland, it like, like things like I know, I know everything has to match up at a certain time. But mm-hmm. like when we talk about like now, when I say top tier bad women and I'm not going to say the B word, cause my mom watches. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I'm talking about like top tier bad bees, right? I'm not talking about like the Instagrams, or mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking about like they're all. I'm talking about like a smoking six point five when she dressed up, she's a seven, and then you know on that on the those extra days when the sun's hits her just right, she's mm-hmm. a seven point five, right? Mm-hmm. Those women are single for literally two to three months. And then they're off the market again because yes, because you get a, a dumb nigga. I mean, you get a dumb African American, or I mean, all people. Uh, <laughs> be like, no, 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 and then they'll talk to the person like, man, I, I really, I, I'm really not gonna gamble this way. And then when it comes to you know, us, us gentlemen, uh, we uh, scholarly. Gentlemen, we uh we uh don't get those options because they're gone real fast. And I just say, just in Portland, because there's not a lot of people that look like us. Yes, I was just about to say that. I will say because we're gonna have a person on the podcast to talk about you know some things on the other side of the gender spectrum. That's gonna be a hot topic episode. Mm -hmm. But I'll just say this: we don't. We just have a short opportunity span to find those people because they're goal oriented just like us, Mm -hmm. and like. Or it's like you know them because you grew up with them because we haven't left. And it's weird if you tried to date them. You know what I mean? Or yep. they've dated your cousin or brother yeah. or they got a baby by somebody or they've messed around with somebody. So it's just the pickings are very limited here. So and yeah. And I and I think a lot like a lot of the new incoming people that have transitioned to move here that are of color get met with people from Portland who don't do them justice and so they like fuck niggas from portland or fuck black folks from portland oh no you can say it i'm just i gotta cut down um, my n-word count but but uh, you run into that like d- like don't get me wrong like i love all women no i'm not i don't despise you know yes. my, like i don't i love like, all women as well um but at the end of the day like there's certain things that I, I i'm looking for and one of them like culturally competent is one of them like, because I don't want to have to explain myself on why I do things a certain way when you question it how I'm living. And I, I'm like, yo, 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 like, this is just how I, this is how I, I do it. You got to understand that. And, and that that part just becomes real hard. And and so someone of culture usually understands some of that. But that that black woman understands all of that. Um, and well, and gonna- that's. And that's just, you know, that's just something that I, I've I've seen and have witnessed in talking and being with one, like, that was, like, that was real prevalent. Um, so, like, Portland doesn't offer a lot of, like you guys are saying, like, valuable people on the market are gone quickly. Oh, like very quickly. And you got to, like, keep your eyes open all day, 24 hours to, to find someone of, of value. So. Then we got to factor it, and we not factoring in the hurt that the people are experiencing. And Absolutely, then, you know, mm-hmm. if they're a part time magician because they're like, ah, you know, I have interest in you, and then poof, a yeah. month later they're like, ah, they're talking to Jerome. You're like, yeah. God damn that! Bl- I mean, that all the ah. yeah, yeah. So it's almost kind of like I'll just say this uh, on my on my end. Um, I need a southern bill. <laughs> Arisha, do you have anything to say about this? No, I mean, you guys are making the point, you know, articulating what I was going to say. It's very slim pickings. It's very, um, you know, the good ones are kind of taken off the market very quickly if they're, yeah. And the one one of the people that I dated wasn't from here, so it made sense because, you know, they had all those things that I was looking for, but they weren't from here. You know, a lot of the people um, that 
um, I've dated or been with or whatever that are from here, they just, yeah, they just didn't have kind of the things that I was looking for, you know? So I've just, you know, having someone outside of Portland or that was not from Portland was easier. So, Mm. um, yeah, unfortunately that was just, that was that. But yeah, I agree with everything you guys are saying. (sighs) So it's sad. So rep your city then. I am gonna rep my yeah, city. Yeah, I love my city, but uh, I mean, dating here is awful. Oh, dating here is like, <laughs> I will just say dating here is is <laughs> awful, but this is just for all uh oh no. We're fine. We're about to wrap things up anyway. I'll just say this. Um we have a wonderful person on that's gonna be on the pod next week, which we're gonna I'm not gonna bring this question to here, even though I have it for next week. I just wanna ask you yes. this. When it comes to entitlement, mm. Do you feel like, and and this is just for all dating cross spectrum. I don't want to tokenize you. Mm-hmm. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I just want to say when it comes to entitlement in Portland, when it comes to dating, when it when it comes to man woman, man man, yeah. whatever non-binary, do you feel like there's a sense of entitlement when it comes to dating in my arena? No, um, because it's just not something that I've experienced. I've I know I have a lot of just guy friends that uh, are dating specifically here in Portland and just elsewhere where their partner, women, whoever feels entitled that the man should pay or the man should do this, the man should do that. So is that what you mean? Is that is that kind of what I'm a little a little bit bit entitlement? Maybe maybe I'm missing the point. I'll just say this. We'll just say this. Um. Sometimes I have an experience of people of color. I'm not going to just say certain Mm -hmm. pieces of color, pieces of color, people of color that because they're so like slim pickings Mm -hmm. that they're Mm -hmm. looking for a certain type of person of color where the, where it's kind of like, you have to be exactly like this. I interesting have a definitely, experience that and i'll just say one thing when i say i'm a mental health professional i see every person i talk to their energy shifts and change like there's individual factors to it but like mm-hmm. there are not a lot of black handsome therapists that look like me but <laughs> i'll just say this i know what you, i know what you, i know where you're going with this yeah you know what that makes sense that makes see? sense because it's <laughs> I don't know how to really articulate it, but I know exactly what you're saying. They expect you to be a certain way because you are it like if they're not from here or even if they are uh-huh. like if they're dating a, a you like they expect you to act and be in a certain way. And then maybe when you're not, they'll ghost or they'll just not be interested. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately that is, yeah, that's, I guess very much been my experience also as well, you know? So it's like, they expect me to be, you know, this certain way. It's like, Oh, you're black and Oh, you're a professional and you must X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I'm just kind of who I am, you know? So it's, it's not a one size fits all. So I, f- I feel what you're saying. How's, you, how's it you, been for you? You pick up where I'm throwing, throwing, throwing yes. down? Yes, and it, it's crazy that you say this because <laughs> I feel like I have to defend myself all the time mm-hmm. because people expect you to be somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not so-and-so. Like, yeah. I'm not whoever you expect me to be. I'm not Damian like, Lillard. Like, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not that. And I'm not going to act like I am. And so, and I think that's the one thing I feel like a lot of black folks in Portland, they act like something that they're not. And so when people date somebody who acts like somebody that they're not, they get confused and the next person that they date act like somebody that they're not. And so now they're comparing you to so-and-so and it's like, I'm, well, I thought you were did this and you acted like that. And it's like, I'm, but I'm not. Yeah. And I think real real people understand, like, if you can just be yourself in these situations, that's why it's hard to date somebody in Portland because I think a lot of people act act in Portland and not be who they are. Um, if that explains a little bit of yeah. my perspective. Yeah. See, I was gonna, that was, like, really leaking out of my, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> out of my gas can like mm-hmm. like like 20 minutes ago and I was like ah oh, I gotta say that for yeah. that but the reason why I bring that up is like I don't know about y'all and like I don't want people thinking like oh Rob's hating on these other people or other guys getting oh get your women get your women up but when we'll just say if I'm being honest and if I were Kevin Samuels myself I'm like a 6.5 for a guy. Like I'm slightly above average on looks. Like when it comes to career resume, like when I put on a suit, I'm a solid seven. And when I talk to similar 6.5s and sevens, they look at me like I'm a cockroach. I'm they're like, huh? Not a cockroach. <laughs> Jesus. I'm just, I'm just like, Damn. I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't get this Costco sample of your day. Do I, do I, do I have to fake that? I shouldn't say fake. Do I have to put on this facade to make you think that I have money? Or would you rather me be low key and be like, mm, yeah, I got this type of thing. But you know, you, know, you got to earn that, you know, that's, that's that. But my only reason I'm bringing that up is, um, I feel like at least here, that's mm-hmm. one of the issues where, because there's such like a limited amount of us where like you have to play this particular box or check box or you gotta have this particular pass for for not to get the win not to not to settle or whatever but for that person to actually see you because i feel like there's a lot of foe like oh i'll talk to you type of thing mm-hmm. i didn't have a shot in hell right don't enter my life don't mm-hmm. talk to me like if you're not going to see me for me you know but y'all y'all get where i'm coming from absolutely yeah. yes well um <sighs> Good thing this is at the back of the episode. A lot, a lot of people make it this far. <laughs> really? People don't make it this far? I'm lying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? They be storming out? Oh, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm talking about like mm-hmm. some really hot topic stuff. Oh, some hot topic. Oh, yeah. And people get heat. Oh, yeah. I bet. Mm. Well, we going to get canceled. Please don't get canceled. <laughs> um. Please don't. AJ, do you got anything else? Um. I think my last... Um. My last thing to you, you kind of top, you kind of touched on it. It was like your ideal partner, and then, but my my question is like, if you had your ideal partner, where's the first place y'all going? It could be a date, it could be a trip, it could be wherever. Where is the first? Oh, the place world. Going? It's it, this is the it, world, and it's open. Mask yeah. off. Fuck it, mask off. Huh. Percocet, Molly Percocet. Percocet. <laughs> Uh, we not promoting. You want to go first? Not oh, where I'm going? Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. I I'm putting on a spot like that. I would say the very first place I would take someone, if we're sticking with prompts, like I have an ultra connection with, I really want to take them to um, Toronto. There's a couple places Oof. in Toronto. Toronto's a dope place. Um, that I've seen and looked and researched and personally. AJ knows this. Um, I always have like a date night. I have mm-hmm. a date night book stored uh, and I just pack things for myself to do later or give out to my friends who I love or for business purposes as well. And I want to take a very special person to Toronto. I, there's a couple places I want to take them. So I would probably say this is going to sound maybe a little basic, but New York <laughs> because let me tell you why I want to love see how you navigate the world in chaos. Mm. Mm. I want to see, okay, so we missed our train. Are we going to get in a lift? Are we going to get in a taxi? Are we going to walk? Like, how are we going to get to our new destination or figure out change route? Or how are we going to fare if you get mugged and now you don't have your (laughs) wallet? How are we going to kind of, how do you handle stressful situations? Because New York is a lot of fun. A lot of fun, but very stressful and very fast paced. So I want to see kind of how you move throughout the world in uh, chaos. And because I am a little chaotic, (laughs) so I need someone to calm me down a little bit. So, yeah, just having someone kind of with me to navigate the chaos. That's super dope. Um, I'm similar to this this aspect of what you said, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I want to look at the cultural side of things. So I would take somebody to uh, a place that doesn't speak English um, mm. and see how they navigate uh, culturally and see um, 
what they would want to learn, how they embrace themselves, how they um, step into culture, how, how how do they take in culture, mm-hmm. do they step they push away culture, like uh, what are you willing to embrace? And and for me, I'm I'm very much so like if I go to a different country, um, I'm I'm two feet in when it comes to a lot of the traditions and their, the things that they do. So like I want to see if my partner can really like jump into that box with me. Like, let's see if you can really embrace something culturally different, like absolutely different. So that's nice. Yeah, I like that because some people are just different in that way. They're like, why are they speaking Spanish at this Mexican restaurant? I'm like, this is their restaurant. They're speaking Mm -hmm. Spanish because this is their stuff. You know, why are you being? Yeah. Like, (laughs) why are you? Yeah. Yeah, So So I feel that I like, I, yeah, I really like that answer. I, I would. Yeah. I would totally do that too. Yeah, I'm taking that idea. So, thanks. <laughs> y'all out here yeah. testing y'all partners for something wrong with y'all. Well, not testing, but like nah. I, you know, like <laughs> I need like, to see how you navigate through stuff because it's like if you yeah. can't navigate through New York, you aren't going to be able to navigate what's going on like in here and what's going on in here because I'm all over the place sometimes. So, yeah, I need to see how you <laughs> navigate. You know. <laughs> and with that, um. It's been a pleasure having you on. Um, it's been great being here, both of you. Thank you. Man, man, man. It's been a joy. Great man. lighting. Great art. <laughs> great microphones. <laughs> um, thank you so much for stopping through. Um, as you know, we're the most traveling podcast in Portland, man, Oregon. We, we pull up everywhere. And um, Say less. Where are we going next? Grandma house. <laughs> At least it's grandma's. I was going to say, we're going to your mom's house again. Uh, but, hey, do you got anything else for our, for our guy? Nah, man. Thank you, man. It's been an honor. It's truly to get to know you uh, on a personal level, business-wise. Um, continue the success that you bring to the city. Um, you do great things. Um, definitely uh, tell the people where they can find you. Um, lace them with your IGs, Twitters, all your handles. Um, let them know. Yes, Instagram, William Xavier Hurst, because branding, and that's pretty much it. That's where you can find me. No Twitters, no YouTube, no, no Twitter, no, no YouTube. No, I'm I thought pretty you'd be getting reckless on Twitter in the morning. Listen, you I do, but in. that's just Twitter is just my personal platform where I have my thoughts. So <laughs> you'd be attacking people. No, of course, oh, no, I would never, because you know, if I ever, you know, blow up in any kind of way, people, people have time. They will find you and cancel you <laughs> with your old tweets. You know what I'm talking about? Well, help us out. Cause we're going to get canceled very soon. How? Why? Why? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I guess that's for the next episode. No, that's uh, this last. Some t- Re- so, okay. Well, mm. we can talk about this offline, but yeah, right. William, <laughs> Xavier, <laughs> William Xavier Hurst Instagram. So, yeah, thank you guys for having me, and over and out. This has oh, been wait, the Play that? No Games podcast slash show. You on the mic with Arthur Dixon. You can follow me and Chef Boy on Dixon. <laughs> Dixon Dynasty, Brace Yourself, Portland, uh, Brace Yourself, Oregon, my bad. And, of course, look here, dot F-R. I. 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 There we go. Not me trying to end the podcast and people still have to do their outros. My bad, y'all. Oh, no, you <laughs> great. Yeah. My, yeah. My bad. Yeah, you try to warm up and close this out. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. But yeah. I know. <laughs> Why hasn't any other guest sung the intro with you? That's boring, you know? That's actually but, very true. <laughs> Absolutely very true. That lets me know you be actually watching. This has been a play no podcast slash show. Peace. <laughs> You probably wonder if I think of you Sorry, I'm for the bag right now Yeah, I'm for the bag right now Yeah, for the bag that I never had Yeah, you probably mad right now Yeah, I got a two-piece now Shit, I think they call them groupies now